Good evening everyone. So today I am going to discuss multiple regression in this particular video. So there is the problem right in front of you. I will be skipping many concepts of multiple regression. So I will be coming up with another example in which I will discuss the things absolutely <laughs> sorry, in detail. But uh, uh, right now I am going to discuss a very simple problem of multiple regression, a quick problem actually. And this is the problem right here. It is experienced that the sales in a particular firm depends on number of working salesmen and expenses on advertisement. Use multiple regression and predict the sales when there are 35 working salesmen and expenses on the advertisement are 500,000 rupees. So if you look into this particular data set right here, there are three variables involved in this particular data set. One is sales in 1000 rupees. Other is number of salesmen, working salesmen in the particular month and then the advertisement expenses in 1000 rupees and it is experienced that sales which I am going to represent by small y depends on how many salesmen are working in that particular month. So x1 is number of salesmen working in that particular one month and it also depends on how much expense is there on advertisement which is represented by x2. So fundamentally there are three variables involved in this particular problem. The one is dependent, dependent is sales in rupees and other are two independent variables out of which one is number of salesmen working in a particular month and the other part is advertisement expenses in thousand rupees. So one Independ two independents and one dependent. So this dependent is represented by y while two independents are represented by x1 and x2. So logical relationship has already been established. Now my job is to develop a regression equation so that I can make a little rough calculation that how much my expenses are, uh, how much my sales is going to be if there are 35 working salesmen and the expenses on advertisement is 500,000 rupees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to data ribbon. There's a group called analysis, data analysis. From there I'll pick up the regression. And uh, what I'm going to do is first of all it asks for input y range. Y means the variable which is dependent. So my dependent variable in this particular case is sales. So I select all 20 entries right here for the data for 20 months. Next is ask for input range x. So that means my both independent variables x1 and x2 have selected in one go. I put this check in labels because my columns have their own headings. Then where exactly I want to paste my output. So let us suppose I want to paste my output in this cell right here. F12. I'll leave these blocks empty for now and I'll be discussing them later. The confidence interval is by default 95%. You can change it to 99% or 90% as per your choice. And I click OK. That's it. And the output pops up. So let's discuss the output now. So if I look into the output, uh, let me get rid of the decimals first of all. So I'll be discussing only certain parts of the output. I'll not be discussing the entire output which are relevant for this particular example. I'm keeping this example pretty limited and I'll be discussing uh, more examples in detail. So here first part is to understand is multiple R. That means it is showing a very strong correlation. That means 0.78 is the multiple correlation coefficient. Then I have a R squared value which is giving me a 0.61. R squared value explains that uh, how much varia variation in dependent is explained by independents combined. That means 61% if I convert 0.61 into percentage it is 61%. 61% of variation in sales is impacted by or it is caused by number of salesmen and advertisement expenses. Now it doesn't mean that 61% percent can be divided into two halves that means half of the 30.5 percent of the impact is on sales is created by salesmen and 30.5 percent impact is created by advertisement expenses no this is not the case the only explanation i get from here is that uh, total uh, 61 percent 
cause in the sales is caused by number of salesmen and advertisement expenses together. Uh, so that's that's about uh, multiple R and R square. I'll be skipping adjusted R square and standard error for now. There are 20 observations in total. I'll be talking a little about ANOVA, ANOVA output that simply shows that this regression model is significant. That means it is statistically significant to study this relationship because my F value is above my significant F. That means I reject my null hypothesis, which is showing which which is uh, that uh, that means I reject my null hypothesis, which is that model is not significant. But here the model is significant to study. Now let's talk about the final table of regression right here. Let me adjust the cells a little bit so it looks a little better. I pull it up. Okay, fair enough. <coughs> so I have my x1 and x2. Let me just pull it back. The number of salesmen are x1. It's fair enough. And then we have my advertisement expenses as x2. Okay. Now let's talk about it. So if I look into this particular table right here, I'll not be discussing these particular outputs once again right now. I'll be talking about p values, which are supposed to be above or below level uh, my alpha value because my level of confidence is 95%, so my alpha value becomes 5%, my level of significance. So if you look into the p-value right here, it is about 0 0.05, that means uh, the intercept is non-significant in this particular case, if it is, you know, um, my, uh, this particular p-value is less than my alpha value, then I say that it is significant. Here, my beta 1, the first coefficient is significant because it is less than 0 0.05. My second coefficient is also significant. So, I'm going to talk about my coefficients only. So, if I look into the regression equation, let me pull the regression equation right here. That's how a multiple regression equation can be given. Y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 and so on. But since for this particular example, I have only two independent variables and one dependent. So my regression equation actually gets modified to only these two coefficients. That means y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2. Now beta 0 is the intercept, which is this coefficient right here. Let me reduce the decimals. Beta 1 is the first coefficient, which is negative. That simply shows that a relationship, if I keep the advertisement expenses constant, it is having a negative impact on the sales. Perhaps more number of salesmen uh, actually increases the costs and the number of total sales goes down. The net, net uh, sales revenue goes down or something like that. And then uh, net sales profit, not the revenue. And then comes the third part, uh, which is beta 2. In this particular case, beta 2 is 26.267 which has a positive impact on sales. So I'll write this equation into my output cell right here, y as sales. So beta 0 is 3195.88, 3195.88 minus, why I put the minus sign, I just put the minus sign because my next value is minus 95.341. So minus 95.341 times x1. So I'm going to put my x1 value here. So I select it up. Oops, I forgot to put the equal to sign before the formula. Very basic things. x1 right here plus beta 2 value which is 26.267. So 26.67 times bit x2 which is right here. And I hit return. So that gives me y value when my x1 and x2 both are 0. 
but right now I'm interested in calculating when x1 that means number of salesmen are 35 and total budget uh, was 500,000 rupees. So that's it. I can get my sales figure right here 13193.945,000 rupees <coughs> is going to buy my sales if the number of salesmen are 35 and if budget expenses are 500. So if I create this equation, I can use anything like if I increase the number of salesmen 60 and I increase the budget to 700. So this is my projected sales. So I'm highlighting the equation once again. You can cross check it. Rather, what I'll do is I'll pull up this equation right here. This one right here. And I'll show you the Excel translation. So you can be y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 y is equal to beta 0 beta 1 is negative so minus 95.341 times x1 plus beta 2 times x2. So I know I have uh, discussed a very basic problem I have skipped a lot of terms in this particular problem but that was the need of R. Uh, so this is exactly it I will be discussing another problem of regression in detail. Thank you.